I'm Steve for This Up With Cars, and in my last two Land Rover Defender videos, I showed you what I consider my must-have upgrades for both the interior and exterior of your new Defender. Today, I'm going to take the upgrades one step further, and these are the upgrades that I would do if I was going to be taking off-road trips in the Land Rover Defender. My first video of exterior mods is for everybody, and these upgrades I consider only for those who know that they're going to be taking off-road trips. Let's get started. It seems that one of the biggest Achilles heels on these Defenders is that if you were in rocks, this lower control arm is made of aluminum. And aluminum galls and it catches the rocks. It doesn't slide on them like steel would. So to protect these and let these slide on the rocks better, I have these proud Rhino skid plates for the lower control arms. They'll just bolt up there and not only will they protect them, but you won't be getting stuck on rocks. These sliders are really easy to install. They hook on on that side and then you bring them up. There's a little tab right here and that is going to slide in here where your rear sway bar link is. I was able to get this off just with the 21 millimeter socket. I did not need the Torx for that. I have that wedge and bolt started now. I just need to tighten it up. Everything is tightened up and installed. This should offer plenty of protection for my lower control arm, as well as a smooth surface for the rocks to slide on. The next thing that I'm going to install is the factory skid plate. Now this hole right here, this is not for a winch, there is a recovery hook located right here, and I don't know why every Defender doesn't have that exposed so that it can be used. But by installing this skid plate, we will be replacing this plastic skid plate, which hides the recovery hook, with this durable aluminum one, and we will have access to the front recovery hook, which will be a bonus because then I can also bring my hook from my winch down and connect it onto the recovery hook if I wanted to which would give me more options like using a snatch block with my winch for more pulling power. I'm going to start by removing these fasteners here. Bottom is now loose and the top is held on by plastic clips. So I'll just start on one side. Start pulling this down. I did break one of them off, but this is going in the trash anyways. Now we can finally get a good look at this nice recovery hook that's here. And why is this not exposed on every Defender is beyond me. I think this is something that every one of these vehicles should have at ready access. And if we were to just hold this up here, we can see what that's going to look like. So I can tell there's two bolts right here that I'm going to take off and use. There's nothing for these two holes right here for now. And these two bolts right here are going to come out and go through here. So to hold this, we need to add a little bit of structure in here. And that's where this piece that comes with the skid plate comes in. So this will end up being installed above the hook, right? Like this with this pocket above the tow hook. Okay, the bracket for the bottom skid plate is installed now. If you don't want to do the work of tearing off the entire front of your Defender, there are easy install brackets that you can buy so you don't have to take the whole front off. But this is the factory approved method of holding that front skid plate on. Everything is back together and that was a lot of work basically to expose the tow hook and to install a proper skid plate, something that I think Land Rover should have done in the first place. And since the front grille had to come out, I have put a light in there, right there. It's already hooked up, but I haven't found my final placement for the switches yet, so they're just kind of hanging out, out inside. This light is extremely bright. You do not want to look directly into this light. Let's move on to the next project. The next thing I want to do is add limb risers to this vehicle, which are the wires that come from the bonnet all the way up to the roof rack and lift the, the limbs out of your way as you're going through the forest. 
And to do that, first I need to mount a lighting bracket up here in order to tie in the top of the limb risers. I don't know if I'm going to put any lights up here for now, but I do want this for the limb risers. And there you have little brackets that are going to attach right here. And my cable is going to run down to the bonnet from there. To install these, this little plastic piece right here needs to be peeled up. A couple of bolts need to be removed, which will end up going through these holes here. A couple holes need to be drilled in the plastic for some spacers to fit down into. And I'll show you what this looks like when it's all done. And here it is installed. So this bracket right here is what the limb riser is going to attach to. There are spacers underneath this bracket. You can see them on the other side over there. And these bolts bolt down into the rail for the roof rack. To get everything installed, I did remove the roof rack. I think that's the trick for doing this on a Defender 90. If you have one of the larger Defenders, you probably don't need to remove the roof rack to do this install. Now that everything's good to go down here, let's put the lower mount on. This kit came with some brackets that are going to mount right here. There's a bolt right there. I just need to take that out and then I can bolt this in. I'll install the other side and then we'll check that the bonnet clears this. Okay, let's bring this down slowly. Looks like there's plenty of room. not touching the bonnet at all. Might be hard for you to see the gap, but there is a, a gap right here. So it's not going to rub on this. Okay, now this is a really cool setup, so I wanted to show you this. I'm going to clip my bottom of my limb riser here. And then I'll take the cable and this tensioner up top and we'll get this installed. So here's the adjuster. And first thing I wanna do is remove all of the pins one of the pins will just pull completely out. And to remove these two pins, we need to take the rings off because that's what's holding those pins in. Okay, all the pins are out. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a pin through the rear. To mount the tensioner to the bracket. Now I'm going to grab my cable and I can mount the cable into any of these holes, which will put a different amount of tension on it. On the other side, I used the third hole. So let's try that one. And then when we close it, we'll be able to see how much tension it's putting on it. I think that's too much for this side. Let's try the second one. Okay, that seems about right. So I can install this pin to hold it all together and then install my last ring, which will keep everything in place. This is such a slick setup that I might end up getting a set of this and redoing the limb risers on my Discovery XD. That's going to be it for today. All the parts that I installed today, I bought from Lucky 8 Off-Road. However, I will post a link in the descriptions on where you can get the easy install brackets for that front skid plate. The Defender is officially ready for the trails around here, and that's what I will be doing next. So if you want to see a video like that, comment below and click subscribe.